And the Lord said, see, by returning to the garden, I'm teaching you how to pray and open the heavens again. See, so it all began, and then you have to remember everything about embracing the glory realm had to do with, in that garden, his glory just dwelt. And with that, man was given, really, the assignment to do one of, well, actually three things. He was given the assignment to walk in that glory realm. But in the midst of it, he was told to cultivate it and to multiply it. Well, right now, in this year of divine recovery, the Lord's saying, I'm anointing you to cultivate and multiply. But you're going to have to walk in this glory realm. You're going to have to watch after the glory realm I've given you. And then you have to remember all those animals in there. He had man name those animals, so he knew who the serpent was. And by naming the serpent, God some way allowed that serpent to be in there that Lucifer, who had created such chaos when he was cast down, could be embodied in that serpent. Now, right in the middle of that glory realm, there was the serpent. Same way with our lives. Same way with our gardens. Right in the middle of it, usually there's a serpent that is trying and he's there to have us understand the glory better. Because he's going to do everything he can to make you choose against the glory. And see, a curse can't work. Simply what a curse means is it's a place where the glory is absence, absent from operating. Whether it be in your life, whether it be in a territory. See, a curse can only work if some way the glory realm doesn't have access to produce fullness. Then, see, from that glory, they were to understand wealth. They were to understand provision. They were un to understand possession and how to use that glory realm that God had given them. The majesty, the dignity. See, those are words that really are linked with glory. The splendor God had given them. Now, there's a reason I'm sharing this because God spoke something to me this week for us. See, the form of God himself, Jehovah Yahweh, is beyond any dimension of glory. That's why when Moses said, I'll go anywhere you tell me if you'll show me your glory, the Lord said, you can't handle it. It's so far beyond you. I'll let you see my back. Now, for nations to change, we have to to be prepared to carry a kingdom glory. And what God was speaking to me at the end of April by looking at that island was my glory is coming over everything that has happened in this nation. Because I had to look at it and I said, Lord, now that island affected our nation the greatest. Please let me understand, is that the moon 
or is it the sun? Is time setting on this nation or is time rising again on this nation? And it was as if the Lord said, that depends upon those who carry my glory. See, I know few places like this or even down in this region, listening to what Sean and Holly did, that have said, we're going to honor the Spirit of God every Friday night, every Shabbat. We're going to honor the Spirit of God and come and we're going to gather. And if we'll gather and honor His Spirit here, all of a sudden, we'll see the timing of the release of his spirit in a new way. 50 days Pentecost. We will worship for 50 straight days, counting the Omer, so that God, will eventually fill the baskets of harvest. We are entering a realm where signs, signs are so important. Manifestations, workings, wonders, all of that's going to start happening in ways that we could not imagine and we're going to have to be quickened to see it. 